All right, here's another Christmas present video. Uh, my niece's husband's uh, kind of outdoorsy. I don't know if he has one of these, but I've never heard him talk about it. So I'm going to make him a little campfire tripod. With a little hook on it. All I'm doing right now is um, stubbly pointing the ends. Nothing sharp. It doesn't need to be sharp. Poke your eye out while you're on a hike. It was cold this day. Um, up to this point, I think I burned about three logs on the forge. On top of my coke fire. The logs heat the building in me. The coke heats the steel. Does a good job, too. The, the, the logs act like insulators. Keeps the heat focused. And on top of that, it generates its own charcoal. Just giving it a bend here. Um, two of the legs will be long. Or longer. And they'll end in little eyes. Little eyes on the ends. And one of the legs will be a little shorter, and it'll terminate in an eye, but then it'll curve back around as a hook. Normally, when you make a an eye like this, or even a, even like a like a hook, um, you know, like a, a hook for a chain. You you would initially bend that the opposite direction that you're going to make the hook travel in, or the eye. But I've been playing around with uh, just offsetting, which would be the same thing. But offsetting is a procedure you do on the anvil, where you would uh, you're basically shearing your steel. Um, if you wanted to make your tongs with uh, rain over rain, instead of rain beside rain, you'd lay it on the edge like that. Um, and try to hit with a straight up and down motion just at and past the anvil. Um, so anything supported by the anvil doesn't move, but the rest should move down. And you can do that with a hook too. I think, so far, I, th I think it's probably easier to do it the other way. Because then you don't, you don't really have to worry about marring up the eye, but I think with a little practice, it'd be just as easy. Or you could even you could even shear down first and then form the eye. You do have to be careful with the shear because if it's if it's too violent. It actually makes a step, which doesn't matter when you're when you're um, placing your tong handles uh, because it it just doesn't. But when you're making an eye, um, you kind of want it to be smooth all the way around from beginning to end. 
with no indication of a step. So, so it would be a light shear. Now this here, um, let me take a look at, yeah, here I'm preparing this. This is the fire poker that I'm making to go with it. And this will be forge welded. So what I'm doing is I'm stretching it out a little bit, flattening the two surfaces that are going to come together. So you have like a couple inches of weld and then the rest of it is free to bend into the into a shape of a hook. And there's two directions you could go with that. You could either bend that into a hook that comes back around towards the front or you could bend it the other way. And I, I chose the front. I actually think the other way would be cool. Whoa, a little too hot there. Yeah, definitely too hot. Let it cool. It won't hurt nothing. As long as you don't do anything to it till after it cools back down and then barely do anything to it. You don't want all them sparks. The problem I think is that uh, I threw I threw all three irons in the fire, so I'd have something to continually do instead of waiting. Uh, but if you don't pay attention, you might end up with too many irons in the fire. Be honest, that happens. Probably something on the podcast I was listening to. <laughs> if you keep that brushed brushed clean, you can you can see if there's any wild lines left. really don't want to see those. Now I'm shaping it down into a to a point, I believe. Let me put a taper on it and then you knock off the edges. And then you knock off any more edges all the way around. And then you round it up. So basically you would go from 4 to 8. And you could leave it at that. You could go to 16. 16 sides if you wanted to. If you're really shooting for round. And then once you knock those off. You could just gently go around and round up that into a nice conical taper I did notice something about tapering and rounding at the same time and that is if you start at the highest end of your taper okay so you have your taper your square taper one end is obviously going to be pointy the other end is going to um, you know, be as is. A lot bigger. So as you, if you want to, if you want to taper that up nice and round, you'll hit slightly harder where the metal is thicker. And as you work your way down the taper to the to the small point, your your hits are going to become a little softer. What that does is it, it makes each flat edge uh, proportional to its circumference. In other words, it makes for a, uh, a, mo a smoother taper when you round it up.
I just the uh, the hook. <laughs> shiny metal on metal yeah that, that's a good contrast there very hard to see the finished product now at the end I was just going to wrap bend the end down and wrap it a few times so, so you know you bend it all the way around and then just I was gonna actually wrap it quite a bit but it takes a lot of material and I, I wanted that fire hook to be or the uh, that thing to be a little longer so basically it looks like a knot that you would make If I would do this again, I would have left more, uh, mm, more at the very end to hold on to. started getting later in the night and my logs were I didn't feel like throwing another log on so obviously got a little little colder Hardest part of those is getting the getting that that bend straight. Once once it's straightened up, you can tackle it on the anvil pretty easily. You just don't want that thing wrapped around there to be uh, crooked. I really like having an inch hardy. There's a lot of things you can do with that, even over like a three-quarter inch. So you get the idea there. There's there's a, a handle and then it terminates in a a few wraps of stock. But now maybe my hands are different. Here's where I made the big mistake to begin with. Uh, I mistook my can of blacksmith goop, the stuff that makes things nice and black, with my can of hardening oil, which in this case is vegetable oil. And you know, when it gets cold, they both look identical. And they're in identical cans. 
That's just I usually never have the hardening stuff out unless I'm hardening something. But in this case, I didn't put it away when I was done. And so I thought that was it. And I tried and tried and tried to get this thing black. And it would not blacken. Well, you know, not, not evenly, not nicely. And I could not figure out what was wrong. It, it, doesn't, it never has that problem. So I started, I changed rags. I, I think I had one that was mostly not cotton. And then I threw on some cotton. And it's that cotton, when it chars, it makes a difference. But <clears throat> it still, still is not going to make as much difference, or enough difference, really, to turn that black. Not with cooking oil. I don't have to switch cans or something. Paint, paint the top of the lid a different color for something. One thing and another color for another. Ooh, a little flash there. Unfortunately, I also didn't catch on to the fact that that stuff smelled terrible. I, I don't mean like chemically poisonous terrible I mean gross terrible because uh, cooking oil does get rancid usually after you after you uh, harden a few things in it it uh, it becomes livable again but so there I am Still trying to figure out what went wrong. Not once thinking that it was my lack of blacksmith goop. I believe I pretty much burnt up one rag trying to get it to carbonize a little bit. Just, just burning it on the hot metal. Still didn't work. So I I wire brushed that down in the end afterwards. I, I wasn't happy with with the coloring. So I think the next day I just wire brushed it down or later that night. And uh, I gave it three good coats of uh, enamel, black enamel. I mean, it's going to burn off at some point. But... So with this coating. Yeah, you can see. You think a lot of that smoke is from that oil, but it's not. It's from the gears turning in my head. Questioning. Why isn't this working? So here I am uh, with my camera, my phone camera, trying to show you what it looks like one-handed. Now I'm, I try to fold this up to show you how easy it is to fold up, but I can't do it with one hand. It's like a puzzle. With two hands you just flip it a little bit, flip it up a little bit, and then fold it back, and then the front folds in. But I can, could not get it with my one hand. And that's what it looks like folded up. I wanted it to fold up to carry it easily. And that's what's left of my log fire. It's 
still ready to go.